Hello, and welcome to a video. A video about a laptop. This laptop this is an AST Essential J, which I got at Computer Reset in Dallas. This laptop definitely needs a bit of work. If we open it up, we'll see that the screen is, uh, well, the screen's a little melted here. What happened is the, uh, the polarizer film that goes on top of the LCD has sort of uh, melted or uh, deteriorated and needs to be replaced. It's possible that the screen itself works and just the film needs to be replaced. And also, as you can see, the one of the click buttons is kind of broken and just, you know, I don't know if I want to turn this thing on before I open it up and just kind of test it out. So. We're gonna open it up, we're gonna try to clean it out, make sure everything looks visually good on the inside, and then we'll uh, hopefully try to turn it on if I'm comfortable that everything inside is looking is looking good. So, let's get to it. All right, well here's our laptop. Uh, earlier when I tried to click the button, this one just like disintegrated, and it's the rubber on this one's getting like melt and stuff, so things in kind of rough, rough shape. So first things first in taking apart a laptop, easiest thing to do is just sort of flip it to the bottom and just look for screws and just kind of take off every screw you can find. That might not be what you have to do, but it might be a good, good way. You know, maybe even under the feet, there might be some hidden screws, who knows? I don't see any screws here in these little holes. Well, that, that foot broke off. That one I wanted, that one did not, weird. The memory expansion cover. There's a memory expansion, but I think there is onboard memory, so I think this should still be able to power up. I mean, maybe. What's this? Is this for? There we go. Ah, well, something just fell out. This seems to be the hard drive cage. It usually says IBM on it for some reason. And what fell on the ground? Looks to be a little adapter cable. Presumably you connect the hard drive to one end and the other end connects to the inside of the laptop. Another panel here it looks like it can take off. On this side. How does that one come off? There we go. Okay, that's not a panel, that's the, uh, the battery. I'm gonna assume this doesn't work. I haven't tested it. I'm just gonna assume it doesn't. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So now under the battery, we see there are some screws. And we also can see the specs of this machine. And a bunch of other stickers. So I guess let's take these screws out. Okay, with those screws out, the case sort of starts to lift apart, but clearly there's still something holding it together. Maybe there is actually a screw hidden under this little foot. Let's see if I can't get this little foot off. Maybe pry a screwdriver a bit under it to get it off. Well, it's deteriorating and there is, nope, there's no screw there. That was a waste. Oh well, I can just replace the little feet or, or something if I need to. So now to figure out what the next part of taking it apart is. I hope there's no like screw hidden under the label. I don't think so. I'm gonna try to flip it over and maybe take the keyboard off and maybe that's how you progress in taking it apart. I see a screw hidden all the way in this hard drive cage here, but I doubt that's what I need right now. <laughs> okay. I could take the screws at the top, take the screen off maybe, but I don't know if that's what I need to do now. Maybe I have to do that later. Um, well, let's try to get the keyboard off. I think I have to like 
pry something under the keyboard to, to get it off. I think, I think it's clipped on. A lot of laptop keyboards, that's kind of how they are. They're just like clipped on to the case. I think there might be like little tabs underneath it or maybe I can just pry it off. Let me see. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. I guess I just had to be a little forceful and just snap it. Okay, not, we're not quite there yet. I don't think I broke anything. Oh, maybe I did. Maybe that snapped here. Not quite what I wanted. That's unfortunate, but I could always glue this together if it does wind up working. That's the only part I broke. The rest of those noises were actually what it was supposed to do to clip open. So some of these pieces maybe are needed. Here's part of the click button that broke earlier. And the other part, the other part of the click button. Maybe I can replace this or glue it together. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll reach the button kinda, so not the worst. So what is, what's holding this still? on, I guess I could take the screws out of the screen here, even though I don't know that's needed now. It might be needed in the future when I want to replace the polarizer film on the screen, but just take everything off that we can. I mean, I hope I don't break this too much more than it already is. I hope I can maybe make this cosmetically, I don't know, something usable, something it even turns on. It was found in, you know, computer reset along with the other parts and stuff there. So who knows, it even still works. And well, that's not what I wanted either. I didn't want that to break, but well, I guess I need more super glue. Well, I could, I was hoping I could get the actual, yeah, like that, like the actual bezel off of the screen. I guess also it's just old, so the plastic is very, very brittle. Oh, that's interesting. It's a, uh, I'm gonna get the camera in there under this piece of plastic here, but, oh, okay. There we go. I, once I get the whole bezel off, you can see that this is a, this is a Samsung screen, assuming this wants to focus. There we go, Samsung screen. I don't know if I can get a whole replacement screen. That might be easier than replacing the film on the panel, but okay. So that was probably unnecessary to take that bezel off, but it looks cool now. I'm trying to figure out how to open. I think I do have to get the keyboard out now, and I don't know how. I can see some connectors for the keyboard, presumably the trackpad, but it's not really helping me Okay, there we go. There's a screw there and a screw there. I take these corner pieces off of around the screen. How do I get to those screws? There's a screw there, but it's just still kind of hidden. I need to figure out how to get to it. I'm gonna guess this upper piece of the keyboard here comes off. Yeah, there's a little tab here, 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 and here, and here. So hopefully this whole little panel here should just come off. And then now I can get all the screws out that I need to take it apart. See? That's an improvement. I see even more screws like hidden under the screen here. Hopefully I don't need to take those out. I don't think I do. I think if I take this and this off, then hopefully this whole keyboard assembly should come off. Not quite. Progress. Definitely progress. I just don't 
I don't 100% know what's holding it together. So if I do this, you can kind of see there's some more. Maybe you can see. Uh, yeah, there's some lots of different screws here. And I'm not sure what's holding this together and what's not, or what I need to take apart now, and what I can't I can wait until later. Are these screws up there holding it on? Let's try taking those out. Okay, can I take it? Can I take this whole thing off now? I don't know if this is what's really holding it on. I need to somehow unclip the whole laptop here. Should I just take the screen off? That that help? I just took the, the screws in the hinges so I can maybe detach the screen from the hinges and then pull that away. I don't know if that's what's blocking it. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to do that. Let's take the screws out of the screen hinges and just get the whole, the whole screen out of here. Obviously still attached the cables and whatnot, but Maybe I can unplug them, or at least move them out of the way, so I can get inside the laptop. All right. Stop breaking pieces, but okay. More little plastic pieces broken annoyingly, but I got the screen off the hinge. Maybe now I can just take out the keyboard. Are these screws holding the keyboard in, or are these screws holding the hinges? And there are two little screws like under the hinges here. I don't know if that's actually holding on. I see kind of a little like pin here holding something on. Again, I'm not looking at a guide or anything. I'm just trying to guess about how this thing would come apart. Let's try maybe splitting the halves from the back here. Let's Something's happening. I just don't know what is like holding onto what. <sighs> Great. That piece went flying. I don't think it broke, it just detached. The little cover for the IR port on the back there. I'll find that in a bit. And hopefully, when I get back from finding it, I can figure out how to take the rest of this apart. Okay, so those screws here, the ones that were under the hinges, I took them off, and now the keyboard is just popping right up. And so was this little center piece that was bugging me. Okay. Now I need to detach the keyboard cables here. So the keyboard has these three ribbon cables coming off of it which connected to little clips here that you unclip and then you pull it out. So I don't know what this is. Is that a heat sink or that's just like something really gross? Like, I don't, I don't know. This laptop, I don't know if it's gonna power up or anything. It's pretty dirty. <laughs> I still can't get the this whole thing off yet like what is I right, take this tape away take this piece maybe I gotta get the screen out there's a screw here which seems to be a grounding cable for the screen let's take that off And if I could find where the screen cable 
connects and then I can pull it away. One cable. Two cable. Oh God, why are there so many screen cables? What the heck? Three cable. The screen was connected with four different cables, including the ground cable. And there's actually another cable connecting the screen here. Ah, here's the screen and all of its different cables disconnected. So hopefully give me more room to work now. Yeah, okay. So I need to take off these two little screws here and take the whole and take the hinge off. And then I should be able to lift this back panel off. Screw here and the hinge. Unscrew that. The whole hinge comes off. And then on this side. And then I think I can lift everything up. Okay. Hopefully I remember which hinge goes where. Okay, they are labeled. This one says R on it. So that should hopefully help me put it back in the right spot. And now this can lift off. At least this can. Take that away. This is still connected with a wire, which I can unplug. Okay. Well, that was annoying, but here's now the laptop with everything taken off of it, mostly. This is weird here, just like heat pipe of some sort going through here, to here, to over here. There's an Intel chip here. There's interestingly a Dallas chip here. Not a Dallas clock chip, but definitely a chip that says Dallas on it. Let's take the rest of this apart. I'm gonna guess the CPU is under this big block here. What's this bit on the bottom here? Let's take that off. So that screw is holding what looks like a ground cable. And this unplugs and then snakes here. And then this is screwed in to here. Let's take off this other little weird grounding screw here. And unplug this. Not entirely sure what this is. Is this like the modem maybe or some other attachment? Like, okay, so I definitely see some, definitely some corrosion here. That was under the tape and under the cable I just pulled off. So I don't know why there was corrosion under that. I don't see any elsewhere yet, so maybe we're still okay. Let's see if we can take this like heat sink thing off here in the middle. There we go. Take that screw out. Can I get this whole thing off now. It's holding this entire like bracket thing on. The screw here that's holding it on. Okay. Oh, now the screw here holding it on.
then this seems to flip up and I can take this out. I don't know what this is. This is an Intel chip here. Not sure what this is actually, but I took it off of the laptop. Probably important. It was covered in the heatsink. Let's get the tape off of. Damn it, I'm gonna rip the tape, but let's get it off here and see if I can't take this hole. Okay, so this is now screwed down. Some two more screws here. And here. Now can I get this up? Almost. Almost I can take this off. Let's tape this. Oh, I see an ESS audio drive on here. There we go. And got this weird I'm guessing heat sink thing off. So what do we have now? We have I see a serious logic chip here. I'm gonna assume that's the video chip. I see an ESS audio drive, which is obviously the sound chip. Um we have an Intel chipset here. Let's get get this whole let's even get this whole board out of the laptop. That'd be fun. I see a few screws left, so hopefully I can just get this whole board out. There's some more screws. Here, here, and over here holding it on. So I guess I gotta get all of them out. Need a smaller bit for these ones. All right, just a few more screws before I can get the motherboard out. Alrighty, I was just about ready to take the motherboard out. I got all the screws out and even the little back panel here that goes over the ports and well it's not coming out and it turns out there is a hidden screw right down there god love it let's get that final screw out and then we can take our whole motherboard out of here maybe Another back panel taken off. And what do we got? We got our floppy drive, which should be able to disconnect here. Probably just need to pull up on this connector here, then I can get the floppy cable out. Probably use like a tool or something for this. Yep. Here's that weird, like, this piece seems to be in the floppy drive or like wrapped around the floppy drive. I'm not really sure what that's about. I hope the floppy drive works. Here are the BCM CIA slots, modem connector, power supply, 
where the battery contacts are, where the DC jack is, and then input power goes in through here. Another Intel chip on the back here. And looks to be a BIOS battery of some sort here. This battery, which is of course a Varda battery. And you can kind of see there is definitely some like dirt and crap around the battery. Don't know if any of that would make it not function though, so. So. Hmm. Also interestingly, there's a dip switch here. Obviously I'm not gonna change those, but I wonder why they're in there at all. Like why would you ever need to change those? This is an all in all interesting, really interesting looking board here. Other than maybe a little bit of dirt around the battery. Yeah, I'm guessing the corrosion I saw here by the modem port is from the Varda battery. So, yep, Varda battery, definitely a problem. Looks like I might have to desolder that or just clip it off and then clean up the battery corrosion here. And maybe I guess we can try powering it on. Other than that, I see no, nothing really else is wrong with it. Um, I see like there are obviously some caps in the power supply and I can take the power supply off and try to look at them, but just visually from what I can see, they seem like they're probably fine. So yeah, I guess I will try to clean up this motherboard a little bit and then we'll see what we can do with it. Cut the motherboard as stripped down as I can get it pretty much. And so here's our Varda battery and you can see the corrosion a little bit around it. There's a little bit on the pins and the modem port there. A little bit kind of around it. Then on the other side of the board, there's some more. So hopefully with all, hopefully that's the only thing wrong with this. And if I clean it up, it might even turn on. I took off the power supply board here. And well, a little spot here that looks a little suspect. The other side of it actually looks pretty good. All these caps. I don't really see anything wrong with any of these capacitors or anything. So I am feeling confident about being able to plug this in and it not exploding or anything. So I guess I will try to clean up the motherboard and then we'll put it back together. All right. So there's still some corrosion on the board from where that battery leaked, but I think I did a decent job of trying to clean it up if the camera wants to, to show that. It doesn't look like it was that bad or even that it really touched anything that was really um, bad or anything. So like, I don't think even if there is any left, it's really going to cause any issues. I'm feeling vaguely confident about putting this together and actually just trying to turn it on and see what happens. I really don't think that corrosion is going to cause any real issues. Um, there was a bit of corrosion on the little plate or the little bracket thing that went around the floppy drive, but I, uh, just coated it in some copper tape. This is after I cleaned off the corrosion, but it was still a little discolored. So I just covered it with some adhesive copper tape here. And while it doesn't look the best, at least you can't like see any corrosion and it should still function the way it was supposed to. So I think that's not the worst thing I can do here. So now I think I'm going to try to uh, take all these pieces and, uh, Attempt to put it back together. Might need to rewatch some of this footage I recorded in order to uh, put it back together. But uh, I think I will just try to put it back together and just uh, fast forward through all that. And we'll get back to the video once this is in a state where I think I can uh, plug it in and try to power it up.
All right, well, while it's not totally back together, I think it's back together enough that I can maybe try to plug it in and turn it on. I don't know what will happen if I do that. I don't know if it'll blow up or anything, but what I do know is I have an AST branded power supply that does seem to match the system. I have the CPU put back in, I have the keyboard attached, and I have the screen attached, and if I can prop up the screen a little bit so maybe we can kind of kind of see it and then I'm just going to uh, plug in the power supply into the laptop and did anything happen oh wait something is in fact happening it looks like the screen is I thought I saw the screen flash. It might be on. Also on this little LCD panel here, it says on and there's some icons flashing. So I don't know what it's doing, but it certainly has power and it's certainly trying to turn on. Yeah, let me, let me move the camera over there so we can maybe see what what it's doing. Okay, I'm gonna try my best to hold the camera steady and if you can see the screen, it's like flashing on and off, like it's trying to do something. And you know, hopefully you can see this little panel here. It's got some icons and it's just flashing. I don't know what it's doing or what's wrong. The CPU is attached, the keyboard is attached, um, there's no expansion RAM, but that shouldn't matter because I thought this machine had on board. Oh, what was that? Is that a good beep? Is that a bad beep? We see anything on the screen? Um, I'm going to try to hook up the VGA output and see if anything appears there, in case the screen is just dead. Okay, so we have the laptop plugged in to the VGA capture, and we're just gonna plug it in again and see what happens. Before doing this, I actually detached the screen and took it away, and we just have the VGA capture attached and not the screen attached. So, plugging in the power, and let's see what we get on the screen. Alright, and, and something's happening. Oh hey, it's booting in. Oh, what's that? that? Alright, so I have some good news and some bad news. Start with the bad news. First off, on this cable here you can see that there are two little missing wires. Probably go to this board here and I don't know if I can resolder those or anything, so this whole thing might just be this whole thing might just be trash. Instead of replacing the screen, I'm going to need this whole piece, so I don't know what to do with this. And you didn't see this on video, but when I had this plugged in to the VGA capture, you saw that it did get to a boot screen, but I immediately had to kill it because I saw smoke start to appear out of the laptop here. I don't know where the smoke came from, but all I know is that I just unplugged the screen and now I need to figure out like exactly where the smoke came from. So what happened when there was smoke, I immediately just killed the power strip that this is connected to. So the capture machine is plugged into that same power strip. So all the power shut off, but that made obviously the smoke stop. So now I need to figure out like where that smoke came from because that's obviously not good. So I wonder if I can reattach this without a keyboard or anything. I don't know just how minimal I can attach this 
to see just what needs to be happening or not. Let's take the processor off and let's take this up. So the weird thing was that when there was smoke, the machine was still running. The smoke didn't turn the machine off. I saw a picture on the screen and I also saw smoke from the laptop at the same time. So I don't know what is smoking or where any of the smoking is coming from. Could it be the power supply or I don't know. I think I saw it come from like this area, like over here. It could have been like the screen connector or something, or it could have been one of these other connectors or maybe since it wasn't fully attached or since this piece here kind of deteriorated, maybe that was shorting something. I don't know. I can't really see like a burn spot on the board or anything, but now I'm obviously too afraid to try to power it on again, but it clearly does work. I just don't know how far it will work or for how long it will work. So that might be the end of this video because I don't know if I want to get back to this right now because seeing smoke come off a laptop just kind of kind of made me uneasy and made me really afraid. I, I didn't get it on, on camera, but I think I might just kind of stop this project and move on. I, I did see on eBay you can buy these, these laptops, but even the ones at eBay don't work or they're different models. So I don't know if I want to just trash this. I want to try to fix it again and see if it will turn on without smoking or maybe just buy another one or buy another one, rip it up for parts and put them in this one. I don't know. But um, when you plug in a laptop and smoke starts coming off of it, that's usually a good time to stop the project. So I'm sorry I didn't get to finish this, but Hey, that's what happens sometimes. So thanks for watching.